The Israelis themselves are now showing very, very clearly that when you give a person who's received two doses of an mRNA, in this case, Pfizer, when you give that person a boost, you dramatically diminish the infection, you dramatically diminish the, the, the likelihood of getting a severe outcome. And importantly, there are early data that are now showing that you actually begin to show a diminution in the transmission itself. So in answer to your very appropriate question about if you get vaccinated and you get infected, is there less of a chance that you will be transmitting it to someone who is unvaccinated uh, or someone who is vulnerable? The chances of doing that are diminished by being vaccinated and even further diminished, according to preliminary data, we'll wait to see the real fundamental core of the data. But it looks like that extra added of protection from a boost will be very valuable. Again, we're talking about data that's being rolled out in real time. And that's why when I'm using terminology that we're having strong suggestions, we want to wait until we get a lot of data to be able to say that with a degree of confidence. So, so on, that, on that note, Dr. Fauci, I mean, how close are we to having clear guidelines, uh, being given clear guidelines on, on what boosters people should take and when? Because as I understand it, there is data that you've seen on Moderna and mix and match uh, in terms of which booster people should take, but, but we haven't seen it yet. So, so what's no. the timeline there? Okay, that's a really good question. The timeline is as follows. We have conducted at my institute a nine part grid study in which we've looked at the three vaccines that have been either approved or giving an EUA, J&J, &J, Moderna and Pfizer. And we've given as a third boost either Moderna to those groups or J&J &J to those groups or Pfizer to those groups. The data on the Moderna boost have already been looked at, given to the company, and analyzed. The data to the J&J &J as a boost actually, I believe, is finished right now and also being analyzed. The data from the Pfizer as the boost will likely be available in the next couple of weeks. And when I say available, I mean the data will be given from the clinical trialist to the companies. The companies will then go over their data and make a decision of submitting it to the FDA for their regulatory approval. So the only thing I can give you is a timeline, which is what we're responsible, we being the clinical research community and the NIH, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is to get that data to the company. That is, again, to repeat, part of it is already at some of the companies and the other will be available to the company literally within a week or two. Wow. Well, we, we look forward to, uh, to, to getting past that, that date and, and maybe that being shared once it's, once it's uh, submitted to the FDA. My, my other question, Dr. Fauci, was uh, how confident... I asked you about this last time, a, a month or two ago, how confident you are now that Delta will prove to be the worst variant that we face of this? And a, a two-part question... To, to what level you're worried about the weather getting colder and, and it kind of pushing socializing and, and all the other related factors indoors? Well, I'll give an answer that's totally consistent with what I've said before, that the likelihood of there being something worse is totally within our own domain and our own capabilities. We have 70 million people in this country who are eligible to be vaccinated who have not been vaccinated. The more people that we get vaccinated, the less likelihood there will be the opportunity of the emergence of another variant. Delta is a variant whose characteristic predominantly that's allowed it to dominate has been in its extraordinary capability of transmitting from person to person. If we allow the virus to freely circulate, particularly among unvaccinated people, you give the virus a greater opportunity to mutate to the point of possibly getting a variant that would be troublesome, even in the context of our vaccines. Why it's so important 
not only for the individual to protect themselves, their family, and their environment in the sense of their social interactions, but it's really important for the entire program mm -hmm. of getting this virus under control, not only here in the United States, but also our responsibility, sure. I believe, and we're doing a lot in that regard, we're doing more than all the other countries combined, is to get doses of vaccine to the rest of the world, particularly right. the low and middle income countries, so that we don't have virus circulating there that can then evolve into a variant of concern. Yeah, because that's where they've come from. Uh, my final question, Dr. Fauci, also has to do with my experience over the last few weeks. I have a whole new perspective. And, and that is a question about monoclonal antibodies. I, I feel like there has been almost zero public health guidance on this, on who can receive them, on when people can receive them, on how they can receive them. I mean, the best I've, I found out is you basically have to go to an ER and see whether they're only giving it to 65 and older or high risk or whether you can get it as a, as a vaccinated infectious person. I don't think people know that you have to get it within the first 10 days. And, and there's just lots of stories about these, these treatments being underused. And I, I just wonder why that hasn't been promoted more as a tool transparently well, that, by the administration beyond just telling people to get vaccinated. Yeah, well, I did a, a special press conference several weeks ago in which the topic of my presentation was the importance of the utilization of monoclonal antibodies. That's the first thing. The second thing, they are being so utilized now that the supply is trying to keep up with the demand. So there is a major increase in the utilization of monoclonal antibodies. And if you want information about that, it's a click away. Go to NIH.gov and search on the NIH treatment guidelines, and you will find delineated there the precise recommendations and utilizations for monoclonal antibodies.